Приветствую вас, братья и сестры. Я благодарен Богу за эту возможность находиться здесь вновь и иметь эту возможность поделиться немножко о тем, который Бог мне положил на сердце сегодня. В этой стране на прошлой неделе мы праздновали такой праздник, День Благодарения или Thanksgiving, и каждый из нас имел возможность вместе, вместе с нашими э, семьями прославить Бога, сказать спасибо Господу за все, что Он нам дал на протяжении этого года. Несмотря на то, что этот год такой ну, интересный, э, многие из нас э, все равно имели многие благословения. Многие из нас имели многие радости, и, и за это надо говорить а, Господу спасибо. И сегодня моя, тема моей проповеди будет о благодарности. Очень часто, как христиане, мы, может быть, забыма, забываем или не обращаем внимания на то, а, что нам надо всегда благодарить Бога и говорить ну, спасибо за, за маленькие благословения, за большие благословения, за все, как проходит праздник жатва или праздник День Благодарения, очень часто мы забываем после этого благодарить Бога. И тема моей проповеди будет об этом. Well, good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm very grateful to be here today on the last Sunday of November. Thanksgiving just passed. Happy Thanksgiving from our family to yours. And that means that we are officially heading into the Christmas season. I know my family personally has already started, you know, putting up trees, decorations. There's already some presents underneath the trees, and we already start. We're already starting to feel that holiday um, cheer, that holiday season, and we're very grateful for this time of year. During this time of year, many of us have taken the opportunity to reflect on what we're grateful for. Perhaps recount any blessings we might have had any interesting family experiences and things like that. I know for me personally, this year was very interesting because I became an uncle for the first time. I, I'm only 23, so I don't know if this should make me feel old yet that I'm an uncle, but in either case, I'm very grateful that, you know, I already have a little nephew who's doing well and is growing well and is beautiful in his own way. Да, слава Богу. During this time of year, You know, for the youth, this time of reflection or this season of gratitude uh, or thanksgiving typically means opening up Instagram on Thursday morning, posting a couple stories about our lives and how we're hashtag blessed, hashtag thankful, grateful, blessed, and hashtag thank you, Jesus. Many of our families have experienced tremendous growth this year. Many were married. Many had children. And many received new jobs and experienced great financial blessing this year. And despite everything we've been through, we are grateful. Now, while going, going on, what, whatever's going on in this world, many of us have truthfully been unharmed. Many of us have been able to still make a living, still have our homes. Some of us have been impact, impacted, but many of us have been unharmed during this period. And for that, we thank God. But it seems as though for many of us, after Thursday or this weekend of gratitude, we start to lose our gratefulness and our appreciation for everything the Lord gives us. We take this one day in the year to be grateful, and then after that, we almost forget about gratefulness. Today, I wanted to give us a short reminder, perhaps on how we can become more grateful for the things that the Lord provides us, and for the little things, for the big things, and for everything, how we can simply just be more grateful. But before I give a couple of the several practical ways we can be grateful, I wanted to share a, a short story that I thought was very suitable for, uh, for this message today. There once was a little old lady who sold pretzels on the street corner for 50 cents. Now every day, There was a young lawyer who across the street would exit during lunch. He'd walk by to the old, little old lady, give her the 50 cents, but he'd never take a pretzel. Every day after lunch, he'd go by, 
give the 50 cents, never take a pretzel, and keep moving on. This went on for about fifth, uh, five years. Now, even though they never spoke, every day he'd give the 50 cents, they'd make eye contact, she would nod with gratitude, and he would walk away without that pretzel. Finally, one day, as the lawyer gave his 50 cents, the lady stopped him and said, Sir, I appreciate your business. You are one of my best customers, but today you need to know something. The price of pretzels has gone up to 75 cents. <laughs> How often do we act like this grandma? We are given such a gift from God, multiple gifts from God, yet we always want just a little bit more. We don't thank God for always giving us food, housing, and everything else we have. We just keep feeling as though he owes us and will continue to provide. At this moment, I'd like us to open up our Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 18. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 18. It says, Now be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Now this leads us into our first point, and that is one way we can be more grateful to God is by simply regularly practicing giving thanks. We should make a habit of expressing gratitude for everything, the little stuff, the big stuff, things we understand and things we don't. Oftentimes we focus on the negative side of things right away instead of displaying a heart of gratitude. Man, this year I only got a 3% raise instead of my regular 5%. Or, man, I was fishing this morning and I caught a northern pike, but what I really wanted was a walleye. Or, man, if I only would have waited just a little bit longer, I could have gotten that higher paying job. When we do these things, we're practicing ungratefulness. Our desire for more robs us of our simple gratitude we should have for what the Lord provides us. I want to say that again. Our desire for more robs us of the simple gratitude we should have for what the Lord provides us. We say we trust God. We say that we, we know that he wants what's best for us, but we allow our jealousy for more to cloud our trust in the Lord and form discontent and ungratefulness in our hearts. Now, the second way we can become more grateful to the Lord is by expressing gratitude regardless of what situation we're in. In the first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 18, we read, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ. It's interesting that he doesn't say, give thanks in good circumstances. And he doesn't say, give thanks for when the Lord blesses you. He says, give thanks in all circumstances. When you lose your job, give thanks because God is leading you to something better. When you're in a tough financial position, give thanks, because God is teaching you a lesson that will help you in the future. When the world around you is falling apart and losing hope during a global pandemic, give thanks, because God has given you a chance to be a light in a lost world. Now, even when times are tough, the Bible calls us to give thanks. And that's because as humans, we are never able to see the full picture and the full scope of God's plan. We aren't able to look at every uh, situation and understand, um, you know, what God's end result is for that situation. We just know that God is in control. God calls on us to trust him. And in everything, we are to thank him for who he is. We know he won't betray us. We know he won't leave us. And we know his mighty hand will guide us. And we should just say thank you for that. Oftentimes I think to myself and ask, why does God want to hear my prayer and for, for, for something or to thank him for something? He knows my pains, but he wants me to bring it to him in prayer. He knows what I need and what I'm thankful for, but he wants to hear me say it. Why? Because most importantly, Thanking God and bringing that into the audible world and into our conscious effort and discussion with God causes us ourselves 
to become more aware to whatever we are praying about. In other words, when we bring our prayers to God and speak our requests to him, we ourselves become more aware of what we're praying about. This is important because then we begin to understand the value of God's blessings that he's poured on us. Now this ties us into our third way we can be more grateful to God, and that is to simply praise God when everything is good. Oftentimes we feel entitled to a good life. We think that that's just the way things are supposed to be. Everything's supposed to work. The world's supposed to keep going. I'm supposed to keep getting my paycheck and everything's supposed to go well. And then when life runs smoothly, we don't tend to see it as God's gift to us. We don't see his guidance. We don't see his protection. We don't see his provision while it's all there. And as a result, we don't thank him for everything he does. It's interesting because people say, pray and thank God for everything. Well, what if the only thing, what if the only things you wake up with tomorrow are the things you thanked God for today? You didn't have enough time to thank him today for it, so it mustn't be that important, right? Car working, the garage door opening, the roads being good, the two legs that we used to get here today. It mustn't have been that important because we didn't have enough time to thank him. Now, even more interesting, if you really want to see everything we miss when we pray or live our lives, just go home, enter into a quiet room, grab a notebook, and just start writing down every single thing you're grateful for. Little, big, small, just write down everything. Before you even start your list, you will have at least 10 things written down. A desk to write on, a pencil to write with, the notebook to record your thoughts, a mind to recognize what you're doing, two hands to provide balance for you, uh, while you're writing, eyes that allow you to see, education to be able to write, a memory to remember things, a chair to sit on, and a light to see. Before you even got to the typical bigger topics of gratefulness like money, health, family, or anything else, you've already listed down 10 things that you might have not even thought of in the past. Now this brings us into our fourth and final way we can be more grateful to God. And that is understanding and being conscious of our perspective. There's a saying, don't let your ice cream melt while you are admiring someone else's sprinkles. Meaning in the name of jealousy, we often lose our perspective of being grateful. In the name of discontentment, we forget to be grateful. We feel entitled to so much more. I recently read a study that says if you make more than $90,000 in a household of two adults, and two children, you are more wealthier than 95% of the entire global population. Now, I know that's a lot of money, but imagine that. If you make that type of money, you're in the top 5% of the richest people in the world. But how easy is it for us to view ourselves as poor and compare ourselves to that other 5%? Once again, our perspective robs us of gratitude to God. Now, as we begin to wrap up this message today, there's one central thought and lesson to be learned about gratitude today, and it's this. We must realize that every single thing we have in this life, both good and bad, big and small, is a gift from God. God loves us so much and has blessed each and every one of us so incredibly, and most importantly, with the sacrifice of his son on the cross. We were inhabited by sin. Sin is ungrateful. Sin is deceitful. Sin is uncontent with anything. It's, je it's jealous and it's angry and it's filled with entitlement. Yet Christ loved us anyways. He died for us and he gave us that chance to inherit the kingdom of God and become his children. And for this, we should always be grateful. We have a choice today and that choice is ours to make. And with that, I'd like to call us all to prayer and to give thanks to God for what he's done.